Straight from the west side, <laughs> Iman Umar Hassan L. Uh, good morning. Assalamu alaikum to the Muslims and peace be unto you to our Christian brothers. I want my young brothers from uh, my master to stand up for a minute. I want you to see these brothers. Yeah. With God's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, praise be to God, nourisher and sustainers of all the worlds of knowledge. I, I give praises to Almighty God. Uh, for this opportunity, this day. I've been in this church many times, me and Dr. Livingston, and after the Million Man March did a little thing down higher high school together. I never forgot that. Was, that was the first time as a Muslim that I'd done something with a Christian, even though I came out of Christianity myself. Uh, so there's a relationship here that we've been overlooked. And I don't, if you would, just for a few minutes, let me go over a few items, because I was prepared to do some talking. <laughs> take your time, take your time. You know, first thing I'd like to talk about is how we became disunified. You know, during Jim Crow time, our communities were so tight, the dollars went around several times. Uh, I remember uh, smoking a cigarette on 8th and Monroe, and before I got home to 6th and Adams, I got a whipping by Miss Bacon, and I got a whipping by my dad uh, for uh, lighting a cigarette. I also got locked up for coming out to the drugstore that used to be on 8th and Monroe. I was standing on the corner, and I came out. And the police came up and said, get off the corner. I said, who are you talking to? They said, get off the corner. I said, well, where you live to tell me to get off the corner? And I just came out of the drugstore. I got locked up for disorderly conduct and resisted arrest, 19 years old. I went to court, and Judge Goldstein was the municipal court judge. And I told him, I might have been a little disorderly, but if I had a risk of arrest, do you see any scars on me or any hickeys on me or my teeth knocked out? He said, you're making a good point. Call the court, get out of here. I said that to say, when, when we have God as our, our foundation, there is nothing that we can't do. And even then, I believed in the spirit and the wonders of God, and I haven't uh, have a, a, a waiver from that point. Uh, when I left Christianity to accept Islam, I didn't throw out the baby with the, with the bath water. All right, all right, brother. I still listen to good gospel music. Right. I don't care what nobody says about it. Because that's how I feel. And at night, when I'm all depressed and everything, I sit up and listen to uh, a Marvin Sapp's album. I made it. That's right. That's right. Good, good song. Good song. We have lost the loving spirit that we have for each other during Jim Crow, the Black Codes, the Jim Crow laws, the Willie Lynch. We've been miseducated, like uh, the brother before me spoke. And I also believe that a part of our problem with our young people is the 1979 Desegregation Act that took away Howard High School, Bancroft, P.S. DuPont, DeLaware, and all that history that we had. We were best educated in all life savings arenas, education, religion, needs, uh, trust. Uh, when we integrated into the dying society, I was sick in uh, February, and uh, when I get sick, because uh, I haven't been sick for many years by drinking apple cider, organic apple cider vinegar, uh, it brought my blood pressure down. I didn't get no colds when I worked at the Longshoreman for 27 years, and I was working outdoors. So that's a health thing there. <laughs> we have lost that, that loving and, and uh, feeling and spirit. Uh, at one time, we had one human spirit up till we joined into the dominant culture. And what do I mean by that? Uh, Frederick Douglass and, uh, no, yeah, Frederick Douglass and Booker T. Washington had an argument after the Emancipation Proclamation and the 15th Amendment. And that argument was, why are we, why are you, Frederick, trying to integrate us into a dying society? The second group that argued that point was Dr. King and Malcolm. And during my illness, I noticed that the three, thir third thing was Dr. King and Whitney Young had the same argument. Why are we integrating our families into a dying society? And if you look at the world today, if you look at the weather, you can see that, and this is what I said in Chester at a, at a, at a, a service I gave. I said, if we look at the universe, the only thing that's out of whack in the whole universe 
is the human beings on the planet Earth. Earthquakes, forest fires, mudslides, uh, wars in all the, all the communities on the planet Earth that's following the, the, uh, the prototype of this so-called democracy, which we know is, is a hypocrisy. All of them are fighting the same causes that we have in America, and these problems are based on poverty. So if it's based on poverty, there's a simple solution. We share our wealth with those who don't have. We bull jive, almost said a nasty word. We bull jive uh, on, for Thanksgiving and Christmas, but that's not the only time that we should be doing these kind of things with one another. God tells us also in our last revelation from God, he says, I made you in nations and tribes that you will know one another, that you will compete with one another in all that is good and feel and, and forbid that is wrong. I just told one of the young brothers back there, I said, one of the things that we as spiritual people have to stop doing is backbiting and slandering one another. Right. You old Christian, right. you old Muslim. Muhammad, right. the prayers and the peace be upon him, he never told us to hate uh, Christians or Jews. He never told us that we should, we should hate any people. He said that we should hate what they do, not what they do, what they, what, who they are. Mm -hmm. And so, so recognizing that, I think that the majority of young people, people that's on the street and getting in trouble, look at the Christian and, Jew and the Islamic community and look at us and say, why should we go to religion when they arguing and fussing with themselves? Right. So our matters are judged by our intentions. So if our spirit is free to obey God, then we can begin to unify our intentions to be unified, God willing. What do you mean by that? If, you're, if you say you believe in God in the last days, we say that Abraham is, a, is the father of our respective ways of practicing obedience to God. And if that is true, and it is true, then we, don't, we know as African Americans, we know less about that than we know more. The devil comes in. I remember my daddy, when I said I was a Muslim, my daddy said, uh, you uh, want to be a Muslim. Now you're going to have the second strike against you. You black, and you're going to be a Muslim. My mom said, and my Aunt Sarah said, I don't care what his religion is. As long as he get off that corner smoking that weed and drinking that liquor <laughs> and take care of that girl with them five children. <laughs> so trying to wrap this up. Our morals are this place that we can't get to unite. Our morals are this place, that's why we can't get to this unity. What are you talking about, brother? Malcolm said, and history has told us, that there's two kinds of people in our community. He said, you know white people around here, he said, a house nig the house nigger and the field nigger. My question today is, which one are you? Because the house Negroes are in compliance with the, uh, with the uh, King Alfred plan, if you know about the King Alfred plan. And if you don't, uh, call me, text me, email me. Uh, I got that document, document from a brother, I ain't gonna mention his name, but he in the crowd. When we were united on our faith in the law of God, now that that has been left behind, most of us, the common people, refuse to even recognize that God exists. You can turn on any one of them 190 some 2,000 channels on Comcast if you got it, and all you see is filth, homosexuality. Uh, 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 fornication and adultery, murder. I look at ID to see how many white people have been killing each other and we don't know nothing about it. Mass murderers. I told the feds when the feds asked me to come and tell them about what I think they don't know about Islam. I told them this. I said if it wasn't for the book of Allah, I'd be dead or in jail because I came home from Vietnam to kill all white people. I said, and I was searching and searching and searching for something to give me a, a road map to go to do what I do. And I've been doing what I've been doing for 40 years. When I, and I just recognized that. I just realized that I found an old picture of me standing on the corner of 7th and uh, West Street with two teenagers, a drunk, 
when we was in black uniforms, military insignias, can of mace, handcuffs, and a blackjack, and we reduced crime at 7th and Tattnall, and we ran the perverts out of 7th and Tattnall, and we also found out that the police was the biggest tricks at that time on 7th and Tattnall. <laughs> I showed that picture to a couple of young people that wasn't around during that time. And they said, oh, I wish I had been around at that time. But my point is that I am so proud to be here today because the Peacekeepers is an offspring of what we did back then. But also, I think we need to be more uh, proactive than reactive. I think that we need to be more in a prevention mode than a reaction mode. And only, and I say this with deep humility from the bottom of my heart, the secular community can't handle this. The only the people of God are going to be able to handle this. And you can't be a coward when you say you love God. You can't be a coward when you say you're God and you believe in the last days. And for believe me, if you're looking at what I'm looking at, these are the last days and times of these kind of times and days. So they say, what mode are you in, Brother Umar? I'm in a survival mode. I got 23 grandchildren, seven great-grandchildren, and a great-granddaughter on the way. She might be here now. I want to build institutions. I want to build institutions that will allow us to have a future in the world, economy, socially, educationally, politically. But here's a point. There's a secret memo, security memo, called 46. That and as a veteran, I'm appalled that nobody is talking about this, saying anything about it. Barack Obama was educated by uh, Brzezinov Brzezinski's family, him and Michelle, Columbia University and Harvard. I don't care about that. But the, my point is that when we have a conspiracy against black men going on, and we're afraid to stand up and tell the truth like we're doing here today, to white people or anybody else, you know what I told the feds? CIA, all them jokers was there, most of them was white, I was only two or two blacks. I said, oh, as a veteran, you, you, I'm appalled that you hate Cuba, you hate North Korea, but you gave the debt of our country to the largest concentration of communism in the world. And nobody is saying anything about that. I'm done. So my humble suggestion. For the betterment of our communities, our spiritual minds need to bring us back together, God willing, inshallah, in unity for the purpose of leading our families out of the depths of darkness into the light of God Almighty. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you.